Living the life of your dreams really comes down to self-trust. And it might sound basic, and it is basic, but the thing with it is when it comes to applying it, there is so much conditioning and there are so many patterns that just kick into automatic. And if you're not aware enough, you will become victim of the conditioning and patterns that keep you away from trusting yourself and knowing the truth of who you are, remembering the truth of who you are and getting what you want and living the life that you want, that your soul wants. And so I was speaking with one of our new volunteers here. We've been getting some mindful as fuck new people here on the farm. I know, I'm swearing. But we've been having really, really good conversations. It's been so nice. If you don't know, I live on a farm in Italy in my van. I was only planning to be here for a little bit, but then I ended up staying longer than expected because of a divine intervention from the universe. Hopefully the wind's not too crazy. Uh, and it brought me back to the farm long story short and then I was guided to doing this fundraiser here and we've saved five five horses and now we have big dreams on the farm of starting a retreat center where I get to run a, a wellness center and have retreats with whoever wants to join any of you and so living here on this farm we have new volunteers coming all the time to help with animals help with the farm uh, new van life people coming to stay for a little bit so it's a wonderful beautiful place like literally my dream come true didn't even know it would be possible to have animals, community, van life in Italy. <laughs> like, it's amazing. With a wellness retreat as my future and getting to save animals and learn about animals and learn about uh, animal welfare and rescue and fundraising. And it's so cool. And I get a baby horse out of it in the spring. Chaos. <laughs> and so... I think that I really want to just go deep into this conversation of self-trust and we can look at the self as the soul. We can look at the self as the thing and the part of us that knows, that has all the answers. And what I was speaking with with this volunteer, this new volunteer on the farm, is that uh, the soul should be, in a perfect scenario, in a car, if say we're imagining a car and there's a driver's seat, the soul should be in the driver's seat and the mind should be in the passenger seat. But so often we have the mind in the driver's seat and then we don't even have the soul like present. Like maybe they're left at home or maybe they're in the boot. And so when we think about that, we can start to apply that. How do we apply that? Well, we get to start Acknowledging that we have these little inklings of knowing. Maybe they're big, but we have this knowingness about us, right? It's our intuition, it's our callings, it's our curiosity, it's where we feel joy, it's where we feel this like expansiveness, this gut, yes. And then we have the no, the ooh, that constriction that it's not for us, or it's like, oh, I feel like I have to do this, or you know, I don't want to do this, but I'm doing it anyway because other people think I should do it. That is all also part of the soul being like, no, this isn't for me, but also the mind being in its conditioning and its patterns telling you that that's what you need to be doing. And so when we look at that, we can put the soul in the driver's seat. What does that look like? It looks like having those, that joy, that curiosity, the sparks, and then trusting yourself enough to follow it and to let go. I mean, let go sounds so whimsical. So there needs to be a better way to explain it and to no longer give into the parts of us, the parts of our mind and conditioning and patterns that tell us that it's not right. It's not possible. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not capable enough to have what our soul is telling us we want that's for us. And the soul tells us what we want by giving us those guiding lights of the joy and the curiosity and the openness. And so self-trust would look like, okay, I'm going to follow this. For example, for me, when I was living in California, it's like, okay, I was living in California, living in a beautiful home, had a wonderful community. I had a job in the space of wellness and health and I was a director, I was the creative director, I was a brand manager, I was like, I had these things that looked good. The mind was like, yes. <laughs> but my soul 
But it's like, don't forget, we want to travel. We have these dreams of, of travel, of van life, of seeing what's out there and of, you know, just trust falling into the universe. And so I said, okay, let's try it out. Cause I'm not getting any younger and I would like to take advantage of this human experience. And I understand that when I follow my soul's calling, everything else lines up for me as long as I no longer give into believing the unconscious, the things that make me believe that I am unworthy, that I am lack, that I am worried, that I am fear, that I am anything other than the truth of that I, the other than the truth of who I am, which is infinite abundance, unconditional love. And so then we get to start making decisions from there. And so when I made that decision to sell everything, quit my job, move to Italy, move to Europe, uh, buy a van, there were so many patterns and conditionings that appeared. Not only were they the ones in my mind of how would this be possible? How is this possible for me? But also, you know, we create our reality. So everyone is a mirror of us, a mirror of what's going on within our subconscious, within our field. They are just mirroring back to what's going on within you. And so people would say, you know, their reactions were just like, I'd be like, oh, like I'm, I'm moving to Italy. And they would just be like, why? Like, why would you do that? Why, why would you leave California? It's great. Why would you leave your job? That's, that's ridiculous. That's probably not going to work out. Don't you have a plan? Cause I really didn't have a plan. I didn't even like know that I was moving to Italy. I, my flight was just to Italy <laughs> and then I was just going to figure it out. And that's what I knew I needed to do. That was my curiosity. I was like, what happens if I do this? That's where my focus was. And my, my heart was showing me and yours is going to show you something different or maybe it's similar, but it's acknowledging that within yourself through awareness and then choosing it and then observing how the patterns and the conditioning will try to keep you away from having the soul in the driver's seat. But it's a process and it's a muscle. And the more that you get comfortable with this way of being, this way of living, this way of operating in this human experience, the easier it'll become. The more you will start to realize when it, you know, maybe they've switched seats and maybe the mind is back in that, like, I know everything. <laughs> how could I trust? How could I be so stupid to trust my own callings? Like, when you think about it, when you think about it, it's so silly that we've lost this. Like, I know it's part of this experience and everything's divine and we signed up for this, especially in this lifetime. You signed up to this moment to be watching this video at this ex perfect time in your own human experience and your own awareness, your own consciousness. But it is quite silly that we just don't trust our own self. You have all the answers within yourself. Every single thing is in there. What you need to be doing, who you need to be with, friends, family, romantically, what place on earth you want to live, you know, the the soul's mission and purpose that you have, the career that you want to be, the the kids that you maybe want to have or not have, the way you want to dress, the color you want your hair, the every single thing. And so I mentioned that a little bit in my sound bath yesterday. It was something that I woke up to from like I was in a dream and then I started like getting this download of things that I shared in that sound bath. And it was really like, we're all just trying to figure it out. We're always trying to adjust in a way to feel better, honestly, to just find peace. I think that that's like the biggest goal for everybody is to find peace within your being within your human experience. And that can look like trying all these different things, trying different diets, you know, trying to adjust your boundaries in the way that you let people treat you and all these things. And you will get there quicker as you develop your own self-trust. And the it's sometimes easier to develop it when you step outside of your environment, your normal patterns, your normal social circle, family circle. But the real test is when you go home or when you go back to those old patterns. Are you gonna fall back? Or are you going to trust yourself enough to embody all the things that you are developing, this, this soul in the driver's seat process? And a big reason why we don't do that is because we are these primal beings. We used to live in packs for survival. And so when we're not accepted uh, in instinctually, that is telling our body and our nervous system that we could die because we're going to be left on our own. 
and how are we gonna, you know, get food, and how are we gonna shelter, and how are we gonna survive the winter, and how are we going to, all these things. And so it takes retraining your, your mind and your body and your nervous system to say, it's okay, it's safe to trust myself. It's safe to follow my own joy and my own curiosity. You are the pioneer of your own path. When you start coming into alignment with your soul and what you, who you truly are, no one will have ever walked the path that you're meant to walk. It's, there is no blueprint and that is unfamiliar. And when our subconscious recognizes something as unfamiliar, it marks it as unsafe. And so oftentimes our subconscious will then create stories and circumstances to keep us away from following what is unfamiliar. So this deep, deep level of self-awareness and self-trust is necessary for you to continue moving forward. You can't just become aware of what you want and then write it down on a pillow and put it under your pillow or write it down on a, pillow, on a piece of paper and put it under your pillow and wait for it to come true. No, it, you have to take steps. You have to open the doors. You have to close the doors that are not right for you. And then there's this beautiful process of the doors will open, but you have to start making moves. You have to start trusting yourself. You have to start choosing. Your most definite thing is your free will. And what's beautiful about the mind is that it gets to choose. The mind gets to choose and the soul knows. So when you have this divine union of not only the two, but the three, including your body, your vessel here on earth, and listening to your body, listening to the signals, and listening to what it needs so that it can most optimally enjoy this earth, this planet earth, this peace that you are seeking, then you can move into this life that is most in alignment with the truth of who you are, and you can get what you truly want. You can remember the truth of who you are. So, I hope that this message found you at the right time in your human experience. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, leave a comment if you feel called to do so. If you don't know what to say, you can say hello to our friend John. Hey John. Hi baby. This is lovely, 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 can't say it, lovely, 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 try it three times, let me know, horse. And in a few minutes, maybe an hour, we have a bunch of people coming. We have a photographer coming to kind of check out the area for an engagement, which will be the first engagement that has been done on this property since these owners have owned it. So that will be really fun to be a part of. And we have a bunch of new people who are coming and want to go on a ride. So we're going to go on an evening sunset ride. And this will be my first time ever riding Ladybug. And so if you know the story, Ladybug is the first horse that started this whole fundraiser thing for me. Uh, because I fell in love with the horse the second that I got here. She was right in front of my van before, that's where she used to stay. And she was like my emotional support and would always be standing there on the days that were hardest for me. Uh, I was very dysregulated at the time of arriving here. I wanted to run away, but she just was so grounding and so healing to me. And she has an illness from an insect-borne disease. And so I didn't even really connect the dots of maybe that's why her and I have felt so connected. But I am here in this moment speaking these words because of the journey that I went on with Lyme disease. And so it's really fascinating. She's not equipped for being a trail ride horse because she has weak back legs and has this condition of wobblers. But to do short rides uh, is apparently good for her and good for her health and good to strengthen her. And so I'm very excited to have that experience with her later today. We're gonna go on a very easy ride, no hills or anything. So I'll tell you how that goes tomorrow. And she's the one that's pregnant with baby chaos. It is okay to ride a horse when they're pregnant. Uh, but again, we're taking it very, very easy. So if you wanna sign up for any of my programs, I have 21 days to rewire your mind, 21 days to know your divine guidance, Rewire Your Mind is all about rewiring your mind, retraining your brain, healing your nervous system, choosing your chosen timeline or creating your chosen timeline, and then choosing it and walking into it. Uh, Divine Guidance is all about going into your heart space, getting to know your angels and guides, how to develop that communication so that you can go forward in your human experience with that guidance and that knowingness and that certainty of what life is truly meant for you. And if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I also have that available as well. So thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful for this community. We have grown tremendously in the past month, and it's been such an honor to be on this channel with you guys this year. I started on New Year's 
Eve. And originally it was a competition with my dad to make this channel and to him have a channel and share about his farm life, but I don't think he ever posted. So it seemed also very divine for him to get me motivated to do the thing that I've actually always wanted to do. At least for 10 years, I've wanted to do it since my spiritual awakening. I always do this because I'm like, I don't know why I do this. It was a spiritual awakening, but I think it's just become so, I don't know, overused. And we have so many different layers of spiritual awakenings, but it was the beginning of my health journey and the beginning of my interest in trusting myself to go down this path of curiosity about these topics. Uh, and so anyway, I am really grateful for that divine thing where he pushed me to start this channel. And it'll be really nice to go see him and to go see my friends and my family in California. He's in Kentucky or Florida. And so it'll be nice to go visit the States after a year of being here in Europe and then to come back here. And I'm redoing a lot in the van. I haven't given you guys a van tour in a very long time. I don't know why, but I'm gonna redo the shower. I'm gonna add pretty little tiles. I'm gonna make it into a closet that can also be the shower because I shower outside. I have an outdoor shower thing that's been really nice because it's very hot here in Italy right now. I am adding curtains and different little things. It's gonna be nice in there. So I will give you guys a little tour once that stuff arrives. Maybe I'll show you the process of updating it. And then also we have a van friend or a volunteer friend coming here to be here for maybe three or six months. And he seems to maybe know what's wrong with my van so he can fix it. And then I could get on the road again and go to Ireland, get my driver's license and go to my farm there, my family's farm there and just see where the wind blows, but be back here too. And just, I don't know, we'll see what the future holds. I have no idea, but I'm happy to take you guys along the journey with me and I will see you in tomorrow's video.